This is Walter Hollowell, part nine of the Triumph TR6 race car engine rebuild. My front plate is installed, the camshaft is in there. I like to take the uh, number one piston up to the very top, the absolute top, and I mark this where the keyway is. This will come in handy for top dead center piston number one. However, before I put the cylinder head on, I want to rotate this so that none of the pistons at the very tip top, and you'll understand why later. We're going to do a test mount of my cylinder head, my race car cylinder head, and I'm going to use a, a throwaway gasket I've used before, and there's a top and a bottom to these. These pan gaskets are good. They're 30 thousandths of an inch when you, before you torque them. You torque them down. Um, for a stock engine, it's 95 foot-pounds. That brings it down to about 20 thousandths. I'm going to be going to 105 foot-pounds in stages. I'm going to work to get there, and that'll bring it down to about 18 thousandths of an inch. And this is the gasket that I will be using, and I've sprayed it with the copper spray. And again, there's a top and a bottom to these. Now we're going to talk about the cylinder head. This is very important. I suggest you get the Cast Caster book, a track preparation handbook, and he has a section in there, starting at page 52, of head porting. Find someone who will do the porting and the preparation for your cylinder head. And hopefully they're not learning for the first time with the triumph head on you. Cylinder head. Also, this surface where the intake and the exhaust manifold goes should be skimmed by your machine shop. It needs to be perfectly flat. We have cut a quarter of an inch off the thickness of the cylinder head to bring the compression up. And then we have bigger valves. If you can see, uh, did you get them closer? The valves look like they're almost touching. These are larger valves. And the combustion chamber has been milled out. Have your machine shop follow the book on that. So, by taking the quarter of an inch off the cylinder head, and here, there's, there are charts you can go to that'll say what compression ratio you, you, you have. And for me, I'm working at 12 and a half to 1 compression ratio. I drive at 5,000 feet, which is effectively about 11, 11 and a half to 1 compression ratio. But when I get down to sea level, I have to keep that all in mind. <clears throat> On the porting, your machinist needs to make sure that they've mirrored the intake manifold. I'm using triple lever 40 DCOEs, and I'm using a Canon intake manifold. And this hole needs to mirror perfectly the gasket and the intake manifold, and the same thing with your headers. But they, your machine shop will know all this. Then we use stiffer valve springs, titanium retainers and keepers, and all that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and mount this cylinder head just as a test. I don't need all the studs in here because this is going to come off again. But we're going to have some clearance issues. with this fancy antsy rocker arm, roller rockers. Hold oh, it just right, okay. Now, there are two clearance issues to keep in mind here. Because we've cut a quarter of an inch off, this front stud 
will probably be too high right here. So you'll need to shave that down, but you can't go too far because you got to put your 3 16 hex key in it or get some additional clearance here. That's at both ends. Also, your push rods. The stock push rod, which we're not going to use, is barely under a quarter of an inch thick. Your chromoly tubular push rod, which is a quarter of an inch shorter as well, but it's five sixteenths of an inch thick. So what's going to happen when you put your push rods in into the lifter and go down, you're going to find that this push rod is going to rub against the cylinder head. And you need to shine a light in there, turn the valves over with your camshaft, it's not connected to the crankshaft, and make sure, find out where the, where the uh, racing push rod touches the head. Where it does touch, mark with some white, white out, then take the head off and just use a rat tail file and get, and get some clearance there. That's why we're not putting the cylinder head on permanently at this point. And if you don't deal with the studs front and rear, at this end, at the back end, is where the oil hole is. Comes up from here from the engine to the cylinder head. Up here, this oil galley goes up to the main shaft and if this isn't seated all the way down, the oil isn't going to flow and you'll end up damaging the main shaft to your rocker arm assembly. That's why this head goes on and off a couple of times before it stays on. There's a clearance issue with the front and the rear stud for the head and also for the push rods up against the side of this opening in the casting. Your stock push rods don't have a problem, your racing push rods do, and that needs to be addressed. Or you'll have a failure here with your lifters and the, and the push rods. Okay, that's all for part number nine. And then we'll, we're focusing on the cylinder head. Thank you.